Today we're going to be tying the well-spoken sculpin. This is my newest streamer pattern. Watch through to the end of the video for some underwater swimming footage and fish catches. If you're not a tire and still want this pattern, you can pick it up in my store at troutfliesutah.com. So to get started, uh, this is an articulated streamer, so the back hook is going to be a fulling mill 6040 stinger hook. This is a size 4. We're going to be tying in our materials with uh, Semperfly 8 dot classic wax thread. This is brown. I've started the transition away from UTC and the Semperfly classic wax thread is awesome. It's a great alternative. It's even cheaper and doesn't have the spooling problems. For a tail, we're going to be using uh, hen saddle feathers from uh, Hebert Minor Pelt. The color is wild type brown, and they have this awesome molted look. So it takes two appropriately sized feathers and uh, tie them into the end of the shank of the hook. We're going to be tying uh, one in on each side. So snip off the ends and then clean up any of the wayward fibers there. For the top of the tail, we're going to be using a squirrel zonker. This one's in brown. And what I do to prep this is I uh, snip or pull off a little bit of hairs at the tail end of the zonker to create a little notch that you can tie into the top of the hook. You want to place it on the side facing you and then use thread torque to have it get uh, tied in at the top of the hook. We want to crank down pretty hard on these wraps so it doesn't go anywhere. We don't have a ton of surface area to tie it in, but we want the tail fibers to go all the way back to the hen saddle feathers. So this that little notch system is the best way to do it. To add a little bit of more movement, we're adding in uh, silicone legs. These are uh, water legs. And this color is root beer. So just tie these in so they're splayed back and then cut them to length to where they end up at about the end of the hen saddle feather. For the under part of the tail, I'm using Sparkle Braid. This is root beer color. Just wrap it back to the legs and then make touching wraps going forward. And leave yourself a little bit of room to work with at the eye. We don't want to crowd this eye. We need a little bit of space to work with. So secure your material and then snip it off close. I'm going to add another set of silicone flutter legs here. Same tie-in process, just get them so they'll splay back a little bit. And then snip them to length. And then finish this off by bringing your squirrel zonker forward and capturing all the hair and the hide and tying it in. This is why we wanted to leave some room is because this can get a little bulky and squirrely.
the snip off the zonker. And then just, uh, you can clean up a few of the wayward fibers and just take a few wraps of thread to build up a clean little space here. We want the eye to be clear, so when we attach it to the articulation wire, it can swing pretty freely. If it's, uh, too much bulk built up into the eye and around the eye, it won't swing as well. And you'll get less action. So we'll just do a seven or eight turn whip finish here. Use a little bit of fly tire cement on the thread wraps to add some durability to the issue. So there's your tail section done. Now for the front hook, we're using the same fulling mill 6040, just one size up. This is a size 2. Pinch the barb down, of course. For eyes, we're using sunken barbell eyes. This is the medium size, and I'm using 1 8 inch eyes secured by some UV resin. This is bone dry. So just stuck those eyes into the sunken parts of the barbell and then filling the rest in with the resin. Clear it up. So we're using the same 8 aught Semperfly Classic Wax Brown Thread to tie in our materials. I'm tying this fly hook points down and I experimented with trying to invert the hooks a little bit and I even talked to Cheech at Fly Fish Food about ideas on how to consistently get the fly to invert and our conclusion was basically we need to add more weight which means lead eyes here. So if you want to tie in the barbells on the top of the hook to get the hook points to invert you're gonna need to go to something like lead eyes. I prefer the look of this better and it casts a little bit nicer, so I'm using brass medium barbell eyes here and going hook, hook points down. So we're gonna be attaching our hooks with articulation wire. This is Senyo's. And I kind of wrap it around the barbell eyes to make them a little more secure. Honestly, I don't feel like on this fly and the trout we fish for that doubling the wire over is super necessary. Hold it in place. Maybe if you're chasing giant, you know, 15 pound brown trout and you're fighting them on like nine weights with 20 pound test line, sure, you might be able to pull out some articulation wire. But I don't think that's super necessary to double over the wire. But tie it in how you like. Just tied it in part way down into the hook gap. Or bend of the hook. Then creating a little uh, eye where the tail section can sit. You want to make this eye as small as possible without compromising any of its free moving ability. But the smaller this eye is, the less material you're going to need to try and fill in the gap in between the two connection points.
I'm just securing my wire here. We're going to be tying over it so much that, again, I'm not worried about the wire pulling out. I cranked down pretty hard on the wrap, securing it in. Take our thread back to the connection point. And to fill in the gap between the two hooks, I'm using uh, Bard Grizzly Marabou. This is brown. And I'm just tying it in so the fibers match about the length of the squirrel zonker on the back hook. The step's just ne necessary to create some continuity between the two hooks and not have that big gap that can kind of break up the two sections of an articulated fly. So we tie in one feather on top and another feather tip down below. Use a good feather for up top because you want a little more coverage, but down below you don't need so much, so that's a good spot to put your lower quality feathers in the pack. So I go ahead and tie that into the other side with a few loose wraps and then pull it to length. It doesn't need to be as long as the top feather. We don't need that much coverage on the bottom. And then just secure it and snip it off. So to build the body up on this fly, we're using that same wild type brown Hebert Miner hen saddle pelt. And a taper is super important for this fly. As you, if you look at the natural sculpin, they're kind of a wedge shape. So the feather fibers get longer the further down you go on the pelt. So to get the right taper, we're utilizing a the small feathers on top and working our way down to bigger feathers as we build the body of the fly. So to prep these feathers, I, I'm taking two saddle feathers at a time and then kind of pinching the fibers so they preen back. That way your fibers don't kind of go everywhere as you're wrapping them around the hook and they'll all kind of splay back. It's okay to go back and kind of do these wraps with these feathers uh, until you get it right. But you always want them pointed back. You don't kind of want them all over the place getting wrapped up in your thread. That'll help create a fuller body and a, eliminate some of the gaps in between each of the feathers. So what I kind of like to do to get the taper right is I use two sets of two feathers in the same size and then move up. So it's really tying in four feathers of the same size before you go to a next size up. So here we're just gonna repeat this process and start building up the body of the fly. We're just tying each feather in by their tips, creating a little notch. Then we can kinda Screen those fibers back and begin wrapping. So as we go along hill or go along here, you'll start seeing those feathers build up a tapered body, which is the look we're going for.
We want to continue this process until we are about a third of an inch of space left behind the barbell. Gonna take a few more feathers here. Also okay to, or okay to undo some of your work. That feather just was too big of a jump in size and it wouldn't have created that smooth uh, build up. So I went back and plucked a couple better ones. So for gills, I'm using uh, an American tackle feather. This one's red. And just creating a notch to tie in and kind of the same process as the hen feathers. Just creating them back and making a few wraps. This red kind of looks like gills, also provides a little bit of a hot spot. I hook most of my fish on the front hook and I think it's because this red gives them a target to hit. You'd rather have them swipe at the head than the tail. So I feel like I build in like this red spot in a lot of my streamers just because I feel like it leads to a better hookup chance. The same process, just secure your fibers and... Next, we're gonna be tying in fins. For this, I'm using uh, feathers from a 4B hen uh, cape. This color is grizzly. I just kinda, they make nice rounded fins once you preen back some of the fluffy stuff. So I'm just tying in one feather on each side to create these fins. I like the contrast with the grizzly. Again, that white gives them another target near the head to eat this thing versus nipping at the tail. Repeat the process on both sides. And we're going to be adding our last set of flutter legs here. Just tie them in in front of the fins with the, or the same way, so just, just so they'll splay back. And then snip them off to a length that looks good to you. So for the last part of the body, I tie in one more, one size up, uh, hen saddle feathers, one more set. 
This will just keep all the materials you kind of just tied in in place. And ensures that the head of the sculpin is the fattest part. So you can see that there's that nice taper build up into the fly now. So for heads you have a variety of options here. Here I'm using uh, rabbit strips in a uh, dubbing loop. So I'm just taking the hair fibers, lining them up, putting them in a clip, snipping them off, and then putting them in a split thread dubbing loop. Another good alternative is to spin some deer hair up front. You could use... Uh, ice dub in a loop or any other fiber you want to fill in your head. I just like the look of this rabbit. Creates a nice full head and really adds some nice uh, fluttering movement underwater. I'm just splitting the thread here. putting our materials in the loop. And then what I do is I spread the hair fibers out along like a six inch, or six inch segment. I don't want any big clumps in there. And we need a little bit longer section of rope to fill in the head. So I'm just kind of evening it out. Once you have the fibers where you want it, just go ahead and spin it up. And to finish off the head, we're just gonna figure eight and Take some wraps of this rabbit, filling in any of the gaps you see until you get a nice full head. Again, you can use any color combos you want for this. I just kind of like the look of the lighter head against the darker body. Add some nice contrast and I think it looks cool. So you'll have a few hairs that pull out that's natural, just kind of pick them away. But the head should remain pretty full like this one. You want to print the fibers back and then take some thread wraps to get those front head fibers splaying back a little bit. But once you're happy with how everything's sitting, just go ahead and do a seven or eight turn whip finish and snip off your thread. And that's the uh, well-spoken sculpin. It swims great. Right after this, there'll be some underwater footage of it swimming. I tie this in this color and in a sculpin olive color, which will come up here shortly. But here you can see it's got that nice taper when you look at it top down. Looks like a sculpin. It's got a lot of moving parts so it swims well when jigged through the water column and pulled in a straight line. Those legs give a lot of subtle movement. So I encourage you to tie some up yourself.
there we go. On the well spoken sculpin. Not a giant by any means, but it's a brown trout on a streamer. Oh, we got a strap in the way here. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna need to find another place for that. Probably do that. Okay. Ooh, water's cold. There we go. Look at that. Brown trout ate the well spoken sculpin. That's cool. Not a giant, but a nice one to start the day. There's another one. Dude, that's a giant, I think. Oh my gosh, I don't want to play him from straight upstream. All right, we're off the big camera. GoPro, it's on you. Uh-oh. Okay. See if I can move around here. That's a big fish. Oh, I just spooked a trout too. Come on. See if we can keep him here. Oh, that's a nice bow. Get in the net. Oh, look at that bow. Okay, let's keep him wet, but we gotta get back up to the big camp. Look at that bow, guys. What a fish. All right, this is a good streamer. This is a good streamer. Put the rod down. Look at that bow. Pin them. There we go. Oh, I, there's a lot of tension on that stream right out. There we go. Well spoken sculpin. What a fish. Let's get a measurement. 11 to nine and a half, 20 and a half inch bow. That's not bad. See if we can not get a fish flop on this one. No! <laughs> we didn't get the money shot.